Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So in response to my last video, where I talked about how choosing the right screen, the right monitor for your room is really a speaker placement question, I got a follow-up, which I thought was really interesting, and I thought I'd make this video about that. And here's the question I got. Regarding speaker placement, my room has an eight-foot ceiling. My ears and tweeters just happen to be at four feet from the floor. I'm told this midway between floor and ceiling is not a good place for the tweeters to be. Which is better or worse? Raise the speakers and angle them down or leaving them at the midway height of the room? Excellent question. So let's first of all understand what this question really is about. What's the problem that we're potentially encountering if we're putting our speakers midway between floor and ceiling? So the idea is this. Let's have a look at this very simplified room looking at it from the side. So it's a cross section of the room, okay? And I've kind of drawn in this standing wave here, which basically means, or what this basically shows us is that this is when this happens when half the wavelength of a certain sound wave fits between the floor and the ceiling, right? So we've got a, an area of high pressure at the floor, then we've got a node, a, a zone of cancellation in this standing wave in the middle of the room, and then we've got a, a high pressure zone again at the top, right? So this is half a wavelength that fits between the floor and the ceiling. And the idea is that if you place the speaker at halfway between floor and ceiling, and by the way, this is about the woofer, not the tweeter, the tweeter. This is a low frequency issue, right? A standing wave issue is always related to low frequencies. So we're talking about the part of the speaker that emits low frequencies, aka the, the woofer, the low frequency driver. So if you place that low frequency driver right in the middle of the room, right in that node of that standing wave, that cancellation zone, that cancellation area, what potentially happens is that the driver can't actually push energy into the room at that particular frequency. Basically, the, the standing wave or that room mode kind of resists the speaker pushing, putting energy into the room. And in consequence, what happens is that you get a dip in the frequency response so that there is no energy at that particular frequency. Yeah, so that's that's the idea here. And what this person is asking is, is it better to just ignore this and keep the speaker at ear height if it happens to be that your room is literally kind of twice the height of your ear height? Or is it better to then move the speaker up to some extent and kind of angle it down to once again face uh, point at your ears. Now this idea of the speaker coupling to the standing wave properly or not properly if it's located in a node is definitely true. Uh, if you've gone through my bass hunter technique to find the low end sweet spot in your room and place your listening position properly in your room, you know that I ask you to place the speaker in a tri-corner, right? So to place the speaker on the floor in a corner of your room. And what happens there is the same, that we're trying to put the speaker in a place where it, it can properly couple to all the different room modes, the, all the standing waves that potentially happen in your room so that we can kind of create this worst case scenario that makes it much easier to hear how the balance between these standing waves change as you move through the room. But going back to this idea of the speaker being halfway between the floor and ceiling and sitting in a node of the, the standing wave between floor and ceiling, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. It's one of those things that is true in an ideal world. And if you're, for example, building from scratch, this is something to consider, right? That you pick a room height that then allows you to place your speaker somewhat lower than the node between the floor and the ceiling. That's basically the idea of creating a room that is usually somewhere around 12 feet high, right? Because 
we going if we, we look at our example again here if we place the speaker somewhere around sort of two-thirds of the way up from the floor and of course our ideally our, our head is at that same height as well then the woofer kind of sits in a place where it excites this room mode ideally if you will you're getting the right amount of energy coupling into this room mode so that's the idea behind picking a room height that is roughly 12 feet usually but in the real world of a home studio and kind of the messy acoustics you get in a typical room that was never built for the purpose of great sound, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And there are two main reasons for this. One is that your room isn't gonna be built like a concrete bunker. This, this standing wave might not actually reflect perfectly off of the ceiling, for example, because of how it's constructed, right? If it's just kind of flimsy drywall, if you've got a, a suspended ceiling, that standing wave might not actually have its node right in the center between the visible floor and ceiling, right? So you don't actually know where this node is exactly between floor and ceiling. There are many factors that affect the the exact exact kind of composition of the standing wave and where that node sits. So it's kind of difficult to just kind of on a whim say, well, my speaker's in the middle of the room, therefore it must sit at the node between the floor and ceiling. That's not a given in a home studio scenario. And the other reason is that even if your room is kind of like a concrete bunker and you get that perfect standing wave at exactly the frequency and exactly the wavelengths that, that the model predicts, as you would see in this, in this diagram here, you're still potentially compromising a lot on the stereo image and your phantom center and just the, the quality of the sound by placing your speakers higher up and angling them down. In my experience, it never ends up sounding quite as balanced and as full and as rich as neutral in a way than if you have your speakers at ear height, even if that means you potentially have the speaker sitting in this node between floor and ceiling. So in my opinion, you're potentially losing more than you win by placing the speakers higher up and trying to get them out of that theoretical node between the floor and the ceiling. Ultimately, the thing is that with placing your speakers and placing your listening position for that matter, rules of thumb really quickly stop working in typical home studios, right? When, when your room isn't built for that purpose, when there's different wall materials involved, when there are slight angles involved, when there are asymmetries in the room, a lot of these rules of thumb just stop working or become inaccurate so quickly that they're basically useless, right? So my recommendation is always in a home studio for that first step of placing your listening position and speakers, you have to test it because you can't know with any certainty whether you found the exact best spot for your speakers unless you test it. Now, coming back to our original question, which is better or worse, placing your speakers at ear height and potentially in the node of the floor and ceiling standing wave, or placing them slightly higher up and angling them down. In my experience, you always wanna start with your tweeters at ear height, even if that means that the speakers at the woofer potentially ends up in the node between the floor and ceiling. In any case, you have to test it. You want to start with your, your speakers at ear height. And if you have a, a, a hunch that there might be an issue with this floor and ceiling node, then you might place your speakers higher up and test that against the ear height position and see which one sounds better. If placing your speakers higher up and angling them down sounds better, so be it, right? But ultimately, in my experience, the placing the speakers at ear height usually ends up giving better results. But I don't want you to just randomly set up your speakers and kind of blindly take a stab at it in the dark either, right? That's just another recipe for turning in circles. So I've created a listening test, the Phantom Speaker Test, that you can download at the link in the description. And it's a structured listening test that will tell you at what, what the exact position of your speakers need to be to get a proper Phantom Center and a proper stereo image, a proper sound stage between your speakers, right? Because ultimately, 
if we know what we're listening out for, if we know what a the, the goal is of placing our speakers, which is a proper stereo image and a proper phantom center, we can use that to then systematically try different placement options and kind of gradually work towards what is the best placement of your speakers. And because we're using our ears, instead of using measurements or some rules of thumb, we can really nail down the speaker placement that works best in our particular room, with our particular speakers, with their dispersion pattern, with how the room reflects energy, because all that plays into how you hear the stereo image. And if you just follow kind of the the standard rule of setting up your speakers in an equilateral triangle, which is a great place to start, but it, that completely ignores the dispersion pattern of your particular speaker and how the room reflects sound. So there's always kind of room for improvement, pun intended, to improve on that equilateral triangle and get a, a stereo image that is really immersive, really present, re has a really strong phantom center that literally sounds like there's a speaker floating in front of you. And then having that sound stage that is nicely balanced between your speakers where you can really hear when you pan your instruments and your layers where they sit exactly kind of on that span between your speakers, right? So this is the test that I want you to go through to figure out what your ideal speaker placement is, whether it is at ear height, potentially in that node between the floor and ceiling, or if it's higher up and angled down, right? So you can test both, you can strategically figure out which one is your best option, and then you stick with it. It's that simple. So again, download the, the guide to the phantom speaker test in the description, at the link in the description, and go through it yourself, figure out what that best option is for you. All right, that's it for this video. I hope that answered the question. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.